Welcome to section 6, Formatting Dashboards and Data. In the previous section, we explored tools for telling data stories in Power BI. We used these to build a customer browser to present and contextualize our top customers, then used hyperlinks to extend the stories out to the web. In this section, we will touch on some formatting concepts and best practices for Power BI. In this video, I'll present some high-level guidelines I've absorbed over the years. In the next two videos, we'll apply some of these ideas to give our pharmacy report from video 2.4 a makeover. First, we'll tackle the colors. After that, we'll clean up labels and number formats. We'll then see what dashboards offer in the way of formatting flexibility, after which we'll conclude the course with some final thoughts and next steps. Now, we'll talk a bit about formatting concepts and best practices. I didn't make any of these up, but I don't remember where I got most of them from either. First off, when I say formatting, what am I talking about? To start with, anything that happens in the format pane, including styling, which means colors, fonts, and borders, which should be used sparingly, but also things that happen outside the format pane, especially labels. We need to make sure they're meaningful, consistent, and use appropriate number formats. Let's talk about some high-level best practices. Overall, less is more. Minimalist design is all the rage because it is quicker for people to understand. Drawing wisdom from Edward Tufte, we want to minimize ink. The vast majority of the foreground pixels on the dashboard should be data. Avoid chart junk. Anything that doesn't directly contribute to understanding the data is just a distraction. How about color? Sometimes your clients will be determined to use their brand colors for the dashboard. They pay the bills, so you may feel your hands are tied. Nevertheless, you can be judicious about which color goes where. Consider themes. These contain curated color collections that work well together. Avoid gradients and dashboard background images. They're distracting, a kind of chart junk. Dark backgrounds are preferred for screens. They're usually more comfortable on the eyes when viewed from a backlit screen. This applies even more so at a distance, where contrast can be reduced. That means a presentation on a projector or a TV. Definitely stick with white backgrounds for printing. We're talking about dashboards, so in theory, your users won't be printing much. But it is something to keep in mind if you wind up building reports for reporting. In Power BI, light backgrounds are also a better bet if you're making heavy use of custom visuals. I found a few that have an internal white background that you can't change and they don't have enough formatting options to make it look right against a dark background. Finally, I'd like to touch upon fonts. As with everything else, less is more. Keep to one to two font faces. On a typical dashboard, if you really need two, it is probably because one of them is a company logo. Use about four to five font sizes at most, and only to convey importance. People can only readily distinguish about five different sizes anyway, so you don't gain anything by using more. In general with fonts, you should use a sans serif font for titles and labels as they minimize ink. Serif fonts are actually easier to read for large bodies of prose, that is, paragraphs, because the serifs actually help you read words quickly, even if they're small. That's why books are usually printed in something like Times. However, paragraphs should be rare on dashboards, so a single Sans serif font face in at most four to five sizes should cover most cases. That's about it for theory. In the next video, we'll start our dashboard makeover.